ਵੀ ਬਾਕਸ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਥਾਂ ਟੇਕ ਲਈ ਗ੍ਰੈਵ ਆਫਿਸ ਇਨ ਚੇਨਈ ਇਹ ਸੋ ਲੈਟ ਅਸ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊ ਵਿਦ ਥਿਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਫਾਉਂਡ ਆਊਟ ਥਿਸ 1060 ਪਲੱਸ ਸੈਲ ਨਾਉ ਦੀ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਇਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਇਜ਼ ਲਾਈਨ ਟੈਨਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਪਲੈਟਫਾਰਮ ਸੋ ਫਾਈਂਡ ਆਊਟ ਦੀ ਲਾਈਨ ਟੈਨਸ਼ਨ ਫਾਰਮੂਲਾ ਫਾਰਮੂਲਾ ਫਾਰ T ਸੋ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦਾ ਫਾਰਮੂਲਾ ਫਾਰ T ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਗਿਵਨ ਯੂ now line tension you put z equal to 0 so line tension is t equals to th plus wh the other part actually becomes 0 that rho minus what is it gjz the uh, z equal to 0 so that will be this so this is straight forward no so th th is already given so th is coming as 300 now w how much it is given so this is 1000 and the seabed is 200 meters so why kilo also oh, kilo newton so w is in no no w is 1000 newton per meter w oh this is 300 uh, line tension is kilo newton so this is 1000 so t how much we are getting 500 so t is coming as 500 kilo newton now the trickiest part of the problem is c c is you find out environmental force to move anchor a so what happens when you are trying to move anchor a so this is uh, the situation that is there is uh, let us say that there is no environmental force static case now this because of the rise in say wind or waves the ship has started moving in this direction so what will happen so this is a there is a slack in the line slack is l minus ls so this will try to become taut isn't it see you just conceive in your mind so your vessel is actually going in this direction so there is a, the, since there is a catenary there is slack line is slack so it is called slack line now you try to move this in this direction so this will try to is going to try to lift anchor so if you do not do anything and this is the your connection point to the hull so this is fixed let us assume that this is fixed you are not doing anything so this will try to assume first it will try to straighten up like this isn't it and then finally it will be in this configuration absolute straight line so that means when you get a straight line there is no slack so l minus ls what is the value of l minus ls so we have to start from this so to lift anchor
this anchor line should be taut that is no slack. So, this is actually the hint in the problem. So, that means what is going to happen? L minus L s equals to 0. But you have not either heaved in the line or paid out the line. Heaving in is just uh, winding up the reel and paying out means you are increasing the length of the line. So, anchor this uh, anchor either you can rotate in the clockwise or in the reverse direction. Now, normally you will find when there is a storm, mm. the captain of the ship actually he has to calculate. Now, so, you will find that you make the line taut that means the tension is going to increase. We will find out from this problem. You calculate the tension you will find tension has increased. So, we have started with tension how much? Tension we have started as 300 kilo newtons because once you make line taut tension has increased. So, that is but ultimately how much you can sustain. So, you cannot keep on increasing the tension beyond certain limit. Then there is going to be a anchor line snap, the chain is going to break if it surpasses the breaking strength of the startling chain cable. So, this you see how much tension has increased. So, your uh, ship or platform is drifting in the x direction. So, in this case you put this equation L minus L s equal to 0. So, then what is the value of L s? L s is equals to 600. Now, from this can you find out the value of A? So, what is the equation for uh, L s? So, L s uh, I have written that L s square is equals to something h square plus how much 2 a h I think the one that we have derived. So, this is equals to h square plus twice h a. So, this is equals to h is of course, the c bed height. So, that is uh, normally the same. So, we are getting 200 square plus 2 into 200. Now, you find out the value of A and uh, L s is uh, how much 600 square is not it. So, this is out here we are getting 600 square is equals to 200 square plus 400 A. Now, from this you calculate the value, value of A. So, A you calculate uh, from this formula, this is coming as 800 meters. Your dimension is okay or not? Now, what is the value of TH? So, 800 is equals to T h divided by w, w we have already gathered as 1000. So, you see how much T h has increased. So, T h you have increased is to 800 kilo newtons. So, what the environmental force has done? So, environmental force has increased line tension. So, this is going to be an immediate effect. So, 
from 300 kn to 800 kn. Cable break set. Breaks at breaking strength. Now the environmental force increases. Suddenly your TH becomes equal to your breaking strength, your cable is going to break. Then what do you have to do at that point? So this actually you can monitor in the ship itself. Now, the captain of the ship is having a, a crucial decision, you know, he has to recover oil, the ship should not have a large amount of excursion, this is called excursion, because that will put undue stress in the marine riser. Your marine riser, say it is, you know, drilling platform is coming out here. So, marine riser also is going to be like this, slanted. So, how much slant you can accommodate? This will produce undue tension in the marine riser. If there is a lot of excursion, excursion will involve tensioning your riser, riser tension is going to increase. At the same time, it is going to increase your cable tension also. So, actually, you will find that there will be no other option, but the thing is that if you increase this line becomes taut, then your the tension becomes near to your breaking strength. Breaking strength is around like some 1200 or something, it depends on the steel. So, captain has to decide on these two aspects, whether he is going to sacrifice this marine riser or the chain cable. Now, if you want to save the chain cable, then allow shift to drift, allow drift. Ah, if you allow drift, then you pay out more, more anchor chain, keep on paying out and this you allow to drift, you reduce, basically what the captain will be doing, he will be reducing the tension to save the chain cable. But now you are paying out, so the you are happily going in the x direction you are increasing the tension in the riser. So, your riser is getting a configuration like this. So, you cannot do this to, to a large extent either because the riser snap is going to take place. So, there is always a limit on excursion. So, you will find that most of the machinery including the riser, they specify a certain amount of excursion. So, this cable breaks at breaking strength is going to, uh, but normally if you are the captain, the best thing that he can do is suppose the storm has come, Gulf of Mexico storm, okay, hurricane has come. This uh, what he does is he uh, disconnect your disconnect marine riser. Now, marine riser, if you look into these pictures, you will find is not as straight as like this. They have some kind of a, uh, the marine riser will like, it may go like this. There is a loop like this and there are the buoyancy, buoyers are here and you make a loop such that when you disconnect, they, it is able to float on this buoyer actually. So, you can take up later, so you can hook it up which is a hookup mechan mechanism on the marine river. So, normally the ship captain has to decide when he is going to snap the disconnect marine riser, allow ship to drift, allow drift, but at the same time do not break chain cable. And if the situation is unfavorable, that means he disconnects the marine riser, uh, uh, either you uh, disconnect the chain cable because if this is at the water line, then you can disconnect chain cable, you go, you go away from the site, you leave the place. 
that it, uh, if you have your own propulsion mechanism, you run away, you see. So, that is normally done in the most extreme situation. So, this decision actually is taken by the captain of the vessel. So, here actually you will find the there is a what is called a quick connect disconnect system. disconnect of marine riser. So, in offshore if you go all these situations you will find after you are, in, you are in the platform say one month, then you will try to run away from the platform, especially if you are located in the South China Sea, Gulf of Mexico. South China Sea is very dangerous, that is off the Malaysia Burma coast. So, this is this thing that is going to come. Now, in our case, we are getting a increase of 500. So, we have started with 300 kilo Newton and we have just to make it taut, you have achieved a increase in 500 kilo Newtons of uh, strength uh, or stress in the cable. Now, what is your x value? Small x, not the capital X. So, the small x formula, I think there are two formulas I have given. One is the sine hyperbolic and the other is the cosine hyperbolic. Some of you can calculate from the cos hyperbolic and the rest you can ca calculate from the sine hyperbolic term. So, expression for small x. So, uh, small x actually you can calculate from h or from l s, either way you can do it, uh, you see which one is more favorable. See from this equation that I have already given you, so this l s is equals to a sin hyperbolic x by a, this is small x not the capital A, from this you can calculate either use this equation or you use h. And these two equations I think I have given you just check. But uh, since I do not have a calculator, that inverse function you have to find out. Inverse 524. So, Dhanusha has calculated x is coming as which formula you use? The first one or second? Second one you have used. So, she has got small x as 554. 554. So, how much x has increased? Previously, what was our value of x? Five twenty nine, no? So, x has increased by certain extent. So, increase in x you write five fifty four minus five twenty nine. So, this is uh, twenty five, no.
but you have to find out this uh, environmental force. Now here actually this how much environmental force you have taken? Zero environmental force. And this is you find out this. Now, if you want to this, you plot best thing. What I suggest is plot th value. Th say versus small x. For both anchor lines. So, you will get a graph say for cable tension uh, say anchor A line what should be the nature of this graph. So, this is your small x, this is T h, you get a graph like this. This is cable tension, this is your A line. Now, you just tell me what will be the B line. Now, X, mind you, what, what is it X? which anchor line you are taking, x you write uh, for you are measuring tension in chain cable B, but x is for anchor line A. You look like this or some other. So, you will find your graph is going like this. But for the same values of x, x is for your A line. Now, what you do, what is our value of x that 5, the second value of x that we have got. So, you take 554. So, this is your uh, anchor line B. Now, you take 5, you have told me you have calculated as 554. So, this is 0 0.0. So now, you are getting it. Now, if you draw a vertical, you will get two points, one out here, the other out here. Now, here you find out the value of T h. So, this is your T 
th a minus th b. But you have to plot a graph, otherwise you cannot find out. So, from uh, the value of x, so in R if you plot a graph, so this comes as uh, this you can do it in the hall. So, this is 660, 660 kilo Newton. So, you just work out in your hull, you put some values of x, cal calculate th for a and b and this plot these two graphs, uh, take 554, find out the difference. So, this is how the problem is solved. Now, the remaining portion, since we have some time, I will just give you some idea of the equipments. And that brings us to the end of the moving system. Now, here actually the anchor windlass When you go for training, this comes under the head of deck machinery. So, in the shipyard, if you go, they have a you will find there is a section that is called a outfit section. Now, in the outfit section, if you find yourself in this section, then there is a section which does your deck machinery layout. So, these are the normal ship, but you go for offshore platform thing is more rigorous because the normally what they do they stow the, you will have huge anchor chains the offshore platform you will find there are huge anchor chains and these are normally stored in reels in the columns Because your offshore platforms central is the mooring system. So, they have the columns, they have these reels, either the position of the columns, or if you do not have space in the columns, you can locate it on deck. So, columns used for reading purpose and storage in these columns, chains. But in ships actually, I think this you must have studied in the, your Professor Mondal must have told you this, no? in the, um, this um, ships if you visit, then you find at the forward end there is a bulkhead, this is called a four peak four peak bulkhead. Have you come across this in your this ship? Uh, I think they normally do it in ship structures. Now, here you find a chain locker just forward of four peak bulkhead. When you go to the shipyard, I happen to visit a ship which is being built or constructed, you can see this. Now, this is called a 
chain locker. Now, on the side shell of the ship, you will find there is an opening through which you take in the anchor chain. Anchor, anchor actually comes from out here, okay. Now, there is a pipe which goes through the ship. This is called a horse pipe. H A W S C horse pipe. And here you will find your windlass is located. So, basically, your windlass, what it is doing? It is lifting chain from the horse pipe, through the horse pipe. And your chain, that is the anchor chain, comes and it is fixed to the four peak bulkhead. There is an attachment to the four peak bulkhead where the anchor line is hooked or it is clamped. So, your anchor line is coming in this fashion. So, this anchor is stored in the chain locker. So, if you see the deck layout, I will show you the deck layout, you will find normally there are two anchor chains which is serviced by a single windlass. So, windlass will be here. <coughs> this is called the capstan where you can do wind your mooring ropes. Now, here you will have the opening on the deck and this is your windlass. This is how it goes. Now, you have to design this part of the ship. This is called the four peak. Now, four peak design is essentially taking care of the storage of the chain and what else you can have in the four peak. So, here you will find lot of heavy stringers are given like this and there is a stem bar. I think all these terms you must have come across in your study. Have you seen the stem of the ship? When you go to a shipyard, you will see how the forward end is made. In the hull shop or a ships which are being built, so they have a stem bar on which your side shell is welded. And if you come at the bottom, this is welded to the, this will go down right like this to the four peak bulkhead and then you have a keel. So, this is connected with the keel. All right. So, this is how the construction. So, basically you have to calculate the volume of the chain locker. If you want to design the four peak, four peak design. So, four peak design, if you calculate the capacity, you calculate the capacity of the chain locker, which will accommodate all your chain. Now, if you take this, uh, there will be two chain lockers. Now, you have a chain locker, you have a partition at the center line. So, there will at least be two chain lockers just below the deck because in our, you have to keep or heave in the chain from the port side and also the starboard side. So, you calculate capacity of chain locker, what else you can do? Four peak construction. Now, four peak is not very comfortable for your accommodation. You cannot have any accommodation out here. There are a lot of structures, you will find breast hooks, thinner plates, stem bars, chain locker is there. So, obviously, accommodation is ruled out. The other thing that you can have if you want to decrease bow trim is tanks, tank space. The void space you can fill by bass tank. So, four peak design. Four peak first thing is calculate volume of chain locker. Now, remember this all these things you have to do in GA drawing. Calculate volume of chain locker. Now, how you calculate the volume? You simply uh, take these sections around here. Now, in a line plan, you, you only have drawn up to forward perpendicular. 
there are no sections between say, uh, say at this four peak bulkhead you have not drawn any section, neither you have drawn between these two. So, you have to draw at least two or three stations out here, sections, and then you Simpsonize. So, that is how normally you calculate, you calculate volume of chain locker and you find out this, calculate volume of what? Volume of four peak, <coughs> four peak ballast tank. So, these are normally the spaces to be allocated forward of four peak, this is one thing. So, Windows is taking care of your uh, this thing, chain locker size. And half peak calculation, how do you do? So, this of course is not in the elements of ocean engineering, but this is all practical calculations you have to do. Say the portion of the ship which is away from half peak, away from the uh, bulkhead, engine room bulkhead. Have you thought about this? There is always a bulkhead at this region. So, this is your engine room. So, engine room is basically housing your main engine, is not it? So, how do you design this space? Four peak design I just told you. Now, engine room and forward of this you will have number of holds and in the forward section you will, the ship will look like this. Aft peak how you will do? So, your shaft tunnel is coming out here. So, this is your propeller end. Now, aft peak if you look into, I think you have done that course on ship construction, no? So, uh, here you will find also stern frame. Now, these are huge structures, stern frame, like you have ship bow, you have a stern frame and there will be heavy structure out in this region. These are called deep floors. Then you have your deck girder will come out here. And inside this, what is this space for? Now, just after this propeller, you have your rudder, isn't it? Your rudder position is going to come out here. So, this is called your steering gear compartment. Now, as a naval architect, what you have to do is you have to order steering gear machinery. From this, uh, normally they will teach you in ship maneuvering, but this you calculate from rudder torque. And this you have to give indent for steering gear machinery. So, this is accommodated in the steering gear compartment and this is your the uh, uh, rudder, rudder machinery. So, this is the volume is take care of that. So, this is called a steering gear, steering room flat.
So when you go into the ship, invariably you will find a four peak bulkhead beyond that chain locker, aft peak bulkhead, steering gear compartment. The rest of the space is your occupied by engine room, holds, so this is a hold one, hold two, like this you can go on. This is the thing that you should remember. Now coming to the deck, you will find arrangement of deck machinery. This you have to do in ship's outfit department. If you go to your design office, in Mazarin Dock design office, you will find that this is the outfit department for our design. So arrangement of deck machinery, you have to do norm, mostly this, the mooring with winches. Then you have anchor windows. What are the other deck machinery items? Basically, mooring winches, anchor windows, and if it is a cargo ship, you will have cargo winches. Cranes. Now these, of course, right now, I'm not taking in ship design, they should take care of this. So these are the items of deck machinery. Tankers, you have cargo pipelines. Tankers, of course, they will, they will, this is for cargo ships. Cargo pipelines, tankers. So GA drawing has to take care of all these arrangements basically. But arrangements you have to have some kind of a pattern or if you do it in a scientific manner, isn't it? Just half a hazard layout will not help. Now if you want to do this, the, the mooring, uh, this thing, mooring arrangement you will find. There is a diagram which you can see uh, not here. My file, you can see. So, this is the example of the layout of a mooring arrangement. So, this is there are two types you can see out here one is the conventional, and there is a constant tensioning winch. So, this is the conventional approach, this is called breasting by means of a spring line. Now, spring line they call that is the ship, the, the whole mooring system has a kind of a spring system. That means, it, uh, when the ship goes in this direction, it will try to draw it to the winch, spring stiffness. So, here you can find this is the windlass, this is your windlass actually. And from heat, I think he has not shown uh, your the horse spike has not been shown out here. But here you can see that is the bow itself is given by a bow line. The one bow line, another bow line is coming like this, and this is your wharf or jetty. So all these mooring ropes are tied to the bollards at the jetty jetty point. So this is one bollard shown out here, another bow line. But this line actually, it is in the cross direction. One is coming in this direction, the other is coming in this direction. You have warping winch. Warping means this uh, reads, it uh, uh, tensions this line and also there is a tension in this line is tensioned by warping on this, increasing the tension here. And this line is also tensioned by means of another warping winch out here. 
So, now the ship you will find you have to arrange symmetrically all these lines. So, you can see the windlass the warping winches are all, all, always positioned on the center line. You will never find windlass to one side of the center line, either towards the port or towards because the same windlass has to service both the anchors. So, either this anchor or this anchor. The, the warping winch, you, now the ship is berthed on the, say this is your uh, starboard side. Now, if it is berthed on the other side, you should have the same system on the uh, reverse side. So, the mooring arrangement has to be symmetrical about the center line. So, there are the number of bollards and roller chalk where which the mooring rope is passed, etcetera on both sides you will find and these are the bollard positions, bollard mooring bits. Now, here there is a stern, the ship has to, now you are basically mooring the ship on a forward end, this is your midship or the parallel middle body part. The out here also to prevent the stern from having motions, you just hook in the uh, aft line. So, these are your deck machinery items which you have to draw, I mean we have, you have to position on the main deck of the ship. Besides your, it, it may have other the uh, cargo, cargo pipelines and all these things are there. So, normally you can draw this in AutoCAD. Now, this cons, constant tensioning winch is that they maintain these win, winches, you can see they are in this direction, but this winch is in the reverse in this direction actually. So, these are actually better this uh, constant tensioning winch because they provide the uniform tension actually, either you can pay out or take in the line. The same thing, same work that you are doing out here, but constant these are called constant tensioning winch. Now, here you will find this diagram, the equipments. So, this is the picture or this is the larger diagram, here you can see the, here actually there is a tanker, this is where they have two windlasses because of the size of the anchor that has to be hauled up. So, and also in tankers you will find the bow is quite wide. So, you cannot service from one anchor, it is servicing both from one windlass two anchor servicing is little bit difficult. So, what they do just where the uh, horse pipe is coming on the deck, they position two different two anchors in this mode. Uh, in tankers they do this because your deck is very large, very wide. Otherwise, in small ships you just instead of two, uh, two windlasses you can go for one windlass. So, here is uh, you can see chain locker out here and this is of course, the cargo uh, this thing. Uh, what is called the um, cargo crane, so that we are not much bother. Now, here you can see the uh, diagrams of different anchors. Now, there is one horizontal stock that is called a stock anchor, but here is this is a stockless anchor. So, this portion of the anchor actually goes and claws into the seabed and this the your anchor chain is uh, fixed to this uh, top of the anchor. So, this is called a mushroom anchor. A mushroom anchor you do not use for <coughs> uh, normally mooring or anchoring your large ships. Uh, normally, these are for smaller ships or steam anchors. This is called a Danforth anchor. So, the other types of anchor, the same anchoring system the same thing is out here. Now, I will just give you the mooring equipments that are used. This I have already talked about. So, these are the different mooring equipments that are used on board. So, this is normally called this a bollard. So, this you you will find at the deck of the ship, but you have to position the bollards very near to the edge of the deck. So, bollards, fair leads, chalks are normally placed along the deck line, just inboard of the deck line. You do not place bollards out here because 
if you take away uh, take up the mooring ropes this much uh, space you will not be able to see the rope is going to chaff on the deck so it is going to uh, break your uh, the mooring ropes so normally bollards you place out here so here in the diagram you can see these bollards so there is this is the inside of a bollard the bollards are normally fabricated in the ship yard. now here you will find this is what is called uh, fairly they are not no or chaw they are coming as fair leads you have rollers but since you are not having rollers this is called a chalk that means you just slip in the mooring rope from the top you just slip in and the mooring rope will slide inside the chalk yeah this this is the fair lead this is uh, one example of a fair lead this thing rotates and takes in the rope and this is your bollard this is a what is called a uh, this is a another type of this is a you can call it this normally they call it a roller fair lead so the mooring ropes they pass between these two rollers so when the mooring line is taken in on board the ship these are the double double fair leads so here you can see only one roller this is a single roller fair lead so the mooring roll is passed through this gap so roller actually so some kind of bearing over which you pass your ropes such that your ropes does not chaff or break now this this is your deck line in ships if you take a section this is your deck line and this is your side shell okay now you will find that you have to maintain a gap between the side shell and the deck line and this region so why why this gap is maintained so you can see in the elevation also there is a certain gap so these are called these are for the discharge of water which is going to accumulate on the deck and the area also is you have to calculate from lloyds they have a um, there is a special name for this i think in your ship uh, they call this as lightning hose not lightning hose is a special name and you have to calculate the area of these holes from uh, either you calculate from lloyds or you use imo rules load line rules so these are specially given for ships to drain water on the deck otherwise you will have lot of free surface effect on the deck which will harm your stability you will decrease your gm and the special name I'll tell you that when I go is I'm forgetting it is called it's not side scatter or special name so this is normally your bollards and fair leads uh, this is your horse pipe you can see so this is an arrangement of uh, so tanker arrangement tanker fair lead moving system so here is a case of a single windlass here you can see a smaller ship smaller ship with a single windlass but you can winch both the anchor lines from these winch drums so either you can use a single anchor windlass or for tankers normally you have two windlasses so this is the normally the machinery arrangement so here also you will find your the elevation of your this is the portion of the chain locker that is shown it is heaved in this manner okay so with this we finish our mooring systems and uh, so this <coughs> you can see the anchor that is kept snug on the side shell anchor is to be kept in this fashion anchor obviously you cannot drop to the hospital there is a huge structure isn't it you keep it snug on the side shell 